Hello and welcome to the Cinema ATL podcast for September. September 2017. That's right. Yes, we've created a new month just for you. A tweener. Yes. Uh, we wanted to put this out in September, but a couple of things happened. We got delayed. So now we're shooting it in the uh, beginning of October. Yeah. But we're going to have another one for you in late October. So there's going to be an October one. So this is not the official this October. Is not, this, is, this is September. That's right. And for those of you that haven't been with us before, the Cinema ATL podcast is a monthly podcast which examines the world of entertainment through the lens of local Atlanta filmmakers. That That's us. us. That's right. I'm one of your hosts, Michael E. Friedman. I'm one of your other hosts, Martin Kelly. And there are no other There's no hosts. other hosts. <laughs> so <laughs> we are the co-hosts. Um, so, yes, welcome to September. That's September, right. Yes. It's a new thing. It's, <laughs> it should be a marketing thing. And uh, for those of you that uh, don't regularly visit the Cinema ATL website, I want to encourage you to start checking it out. CinemaATL.com. We're doing a lot of new stuff there. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff you hear here is going to be translated into articles on the site. Right. Top and three. We'll have yeah, we'll have like our standard top three that we normally do in the podcast. We're now writing out and we're doing it on a weekly ish basis. Right. Um, there's also a uh, four good things. Four good things, which is a, a quick take video on. vlog that I do where okay. I mention four good things since the title about a movie, even if it's not a very good movie. <laughs> try to say nice things. Right. Um, we also have a five questions, uh, yeah, regular article. In fact, I just put one up uh, yesterday on uh, Phoebe Brown, who right. is co-owner of Atelier Props and Design. Atelier, and uh, you can learn a lot about uh, props and set deck and other things that she's done. Um, very interesting read. And also, um, theater concessions. <laughs> well, I don't think she talks about theater concessions. Oh, okay. Is that the, she, 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 well, she mentions... She, makes, she has a take she, on she has, it. Yeah, she has a hot take. Hot take. <laughs> um, and then another thing that we've added recently, and Charles Judson is uh, leading this one up, is a thing called Six Reels. Six Reels. So if you have a reel that you would like to share with the world, submit it to us. You can go to cinemaatl.com slash six reels. Any kind of reel, yeah. So your actor reel, your yep. cinematography reel, your editing reel. And we'll share it with... The world. We put six of them together and show showcase them. Yes. So that's and, what and we've got. You know, other segments too. Yeah. Don't don't forget this podcast, uh, Atlanta Film Chat Atlanta podcast. Film Chat. Yeah. Uh, as well as uh, sometimes articles about local films. Yeah, and we're hoping to do even more. So stick with us. Um, and you can also <laughs> tell us what you're working on. You can Please. tweet us at mm -hmm. Cinema ATL on Twitter, or you can get me directly at Badger Thirty Three. Or me on uh, Twitter or Instagram at, at Marte underscore Real One. That's yes. R E E L O N E. Marte um, at Real One. And we want everybody to comment. Tell us, a, Definitely. tell us how we're doing. Tell us what you want to hear more of. Tell us what you want to write more you of. Tell, right? tell us what you want to hear less of. You can, <laughs> you can talk to us on Twitter, Facebook. You can go to cinemaatel.com and uh, post there. And make Absolutely. sure you share. And retweet. Yeah, and the podcast also um, can be picked up pretty much anywhere uh, that you listen to podcasts. iTunes, uh, SoundCloud, where else? Uh, Stitcher. Stitcher, that's right. And plethora of YouTube, of course. Of course, we're, and of course. Video, we're video and audio. Yeah, so if you're true. listening to us on one or the other, hi. Yeah, I'm waving. If you're listening to audio, you don't see me it's, waving. But. It's, hard, it's hard to remember. <laughs> we, we're, we're, I'm thinking podcasts, and yet this is more than a podcast. Uh, and then, like I said, tell us what you're working on, because we'd like to mention it either sure. on the site or in the podcast. Martin, mm -hmm. you were contacted by somebody recently about yes. a, a project um, you're working on. Absolutely. There's a feature um, film called Glitch. Uh, Adante Watts is um, the director. Uh, the trailer is available on YouTube. I, I don't know the quick and easy link for it, yeah, but if you go Glitch, glitch movie. Yeah. Is it Glitch or The Glitch? I think it's just Glitch. Glitch. Glitch movie. It's a thriller. It's a cyber thriller about uh, college kids who invent a program that gets out of their hands, and they got to team up with some some people to get it back before um, you know evil doers have their way with it. Uh, the trailer's very very nice, and so I encourage you to go look at it. And again, Adante Watts, uh, Georgia State graduate. Oh, nice. And then also, I'd like to mention Dandelion, which is a film by Chance White. Um, it's a short film, um, but the trailer's out for that as well. So look up, look for Dandelion Film. It's, it looks really good. He's it, done a real good job with it, and I can't wait to hear more about it. And hopefully we'll have an article about him. Well, yeah, I definitely too. can't wait to see the trailer for that because I like Chance Chance's stuff before. I've seen some of his work before. It's been, it's been very good. 
So that's us. Uh, let's talk about what we're going to talk about on the podcast this sure. month uh, of September. So this month uh, we are going to do industry, industry news. Industry news, our standard uh, intro, intro segment. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to go into a top three. And the top three topic this month is... Is Tom Cruise movies. Tom Cruise movies, which we chose because our big movie review this month is... is American Made. American Made, starring said actor. So, well, I think it's, star- it's starring... Hmm. Starring Rob Prago. Rob Prago, E. Roger, Roger Mitchell. Mitchell. <laughs> and- <laughs> oh! Local Atlanta. Domhnall Gleeson. Dom- oh, Domhnall Gleeson, yeah. yeah. And, oh yeah, yeah, that's, he's, yeah, he's a big thing yeah. in Star Wars. And some guy. Some guy that's in the And the other dude. Like that. <laughs> um, and then our technique topic, it's gonna, we're playing a little loose this, this month. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about adaptations, cons- mm. since American Made is... It's not really an adaptation of a book, but it's based on a true story. Sure. So it's it's almost an adaptation. I mean, there there have been published, published stories, stories about this specific the topic, book, but yeah. right, exactly. Um, we're going to talk about a little bit about, about that, and we're talking about a little bit about the you know the process of ad, ad, adapting um, your work. Yeah, one way or the other, both. Yeah, both. And then finally, we wrap it up with our movie game. The movie game. And. Uh, Everyone's favorite segment, I think. I mean, I think it's safe to say that. It's sweeping the nation. It's safe to say it's everyone's favorite segment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, how about we just get into some industry? Now? Okay. Let's go for it. So, um, what what do you want to talk about industry news-wise? What do you want to start off with? There's so little to talk about. No, wait. There's a lot <laughs> to talk about in Atlanta right now. Let's talk about some stuff that's out there right now or will be coming very soon. Sure, um, sure. Num- uh, number one that I have on the list is, well, two films uh, by local Atlanta filmmakers. Filmmakers, yeah. Yeah, that have big, wide big, releases. Exactly. Um, we have The Vault by Dan Bush Correct. and The Ritual by David Bruckner. Right. And these two work together on the a signal. Lot on the signal and, 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 and the Daily's project. Yeah, Daily's project, kind of everything else. Started. Um, but yeah, these two movies, um, one's coming soon. The Vault uh, actually played at the Plaza. Um, so that, now it's available on On Demand as well. Mm-hmm. So It stars, it star. well, I think it was James, Franco, James right? Franco's in it, Taron Manning, and um, um, uh, some other, I'm, I'm from Some Black other actors. I'm, well, some you other know. fuzzy props, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and also... Uh, the other one, The Ritual, actually played at the Toronto uh, Film Festival and was picked up by Netflix for a nice chunk of change so, right. by David Bruckner, and that looks really interesting. It wasn't filmed in Atlanta. No. The Vault was filmed in Atlanta, but The Ritual Yeah, the other one, out. I think, is filmed in England. Like, yeah, Ireland, I think. Somewhere. Oh, Ireland, okay. Somewhere. Okay. I, yeah, yeah, Rafe Spall the is, is the lead in that, and Rafe Spall was a uh, standout in uh, Cameron Crowe's uh, Showtime series called Roadies. Oh, okay, cool. Um, some other stuff that's coming up on TV, we have, uh, well, The Gifted actually just premiered on Monday from mm-hmm. this podcast on October 2nd. That was actually, the pilot was actually a shot in Dallas, but they've moved production to Atlanta, and they actually did a bunch of reshoots, um, so there are some oh, okay. scenes that are in Atlanta. I missed that, I didn't see it. So, and it's supposed to take place in Atlanta, so. Oh, again? Kind of interesting, yes. Oh, nice. Um, and then, of course, there's this little show that um, you might have heard of called Stranger Things. Stranger Things, which is coming back. And then October 27th, 27th right? For its second season. Um, not really anybody talking about this one, but... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we give it a little... We See, we give it some love yeah. here. As opposed to other... <laughs> As opposed to other media outlets. <laughs> the, fake, the fake news. <laughs> um, fake entertainment news. <laughs> and then uh, we also have a Dynasty, which is premiering next week on The CW. Nice. So that's a reboot. A Very remake. cool. And... Uh, so that's kind of stuff that's out there right now. Yeah, Star also. Uh, oh, Star, yeah. Star's yeah. second season has yeah. come out. There's, a, there's some other... I mean, there's a bunch of stuff. But we, we could go on, yeah. We could <laughs> go on. So let's talk about the stuff um, that, I mean, that is filming now. Yeah, so filming now, we have some more some more TV. We've got uh, Black Lightning, another CW mm-hmm. show. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of CW. Um, Scream is coming... Uh, here is for that third season, season three. Wow, yes. okay, cool. um, I believe they were also based in New Orleans at one point. Originally, and moved okay. to production here. And uh, Brock Meyer is going to yeah, season second two season for right. IFC, which is a very funny show. It is, is what yeah. I've seen of it. Yeah. Um, it's 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 very cool. Yeah, and then uh, that's filming in Macon area. I believe. Okay. Oh, I, wow, well, is it? I think it's filming also in other oh, areas, but yeah, yeah Macon. The, the primarily, stadium the stadium is. Macon, yeah, yes. exactly. 
Um, and then we also have uh, a little show that won some awards, uh, Atlanta. That's right. Atlanta's second starting, season. Starting. I, I, you know, for some reason, I thought it was going to be delayed for a while, but now it seems like yeah, it hasn't been. They're ramping up. They're casting. I've been tweeting out on CinemaTL a bunch of casting notices for, for Atlanta. And if you hadn't heard, D- Donald Glover won not only for his acting performance, but, but for also directing. for directing right. one of the episodes. Well, so, yeah, they've swept. I mean, he swept up a lot of awards. Yeah. The, the Emmys are the most recent, but he also, you know, they also had won the Golden Globe, um, you know, already yeah. for, for Atlanta. So that's that's fantastic. And then uh, there's another show that, uh, that you. Martin, I'm have, super excited about you, this show. You said you were, you told me you were super I'm, psyched about this, and I just found out about it today, which is just weird. But oh, really, I, 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 I just found out about it today. You heard you've about been, it. You've been too busy on set. I've I, I have. I yes, I've been things. very very busy doing other <laughs> things. But Cobra Kai yes. is a TV show. It's going to be on YouTube Red, and if people don't guess what that is. Do you know who the Cobra Kai's are? I mean, I know you know. Sweep the leg, Johnny. That's Sweep right. The leg. Sweep the leg. Put them in a body bag. So there's going to be, you know, leg injuries at local <laughs> Atlanta hospitals, I think, soon. But because the story revolves around, uh, it's a direct sort of sequel to the original Karate Kid series starring Ralph Macchio. And uh, the other guy's name, uh, he's in it. But I Johnny, can't, but uh, this character. The, but... Johnny's, yeah, Johnny's in it. What's his name? I can't remember. <laughs> Zebka is his last oh, name, yeah. but I forget his first name. But it's about them 30 years later, so it's a sitcom, actually. So I, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. The Sound, people behind it, like... like a cool concept. Yeah. yeah, the people behind it are very funny writers and, 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 and creators, so I'm real excited about that, because I'm a big Karate Kid fan. Nice. And then we also have some uh, movies coming to town, um, if they haven't started already, but one of them... Is uh, Venom, which is a spinoff of the Spider-Man universe. It's, okay. Uh, not, it's a Sony movie, so it's not part of the Marvel universe, but it's sure. a spinoff of Spider-Man. Sure. So who knows if Spider-Man's going to be in it or not? But it stars uh, Tom Hardy as the title character. So he's Venom. Yes, he's Venom. Oh, okay. And they also just announced that Michelle Williams has been cast as well. So. And then IMDb had some really big sort of to do yesterday about a minor character from Spider-Man. Mm. Uh, Asian actress, I forgot her name, I don't know her name, but they said, oh, you may recognize her from that. She's in the scene, you know, in the school. She's one of the mm-hmm. school kids. She is the spider, she gets bitten by the same spider in the comic books. Do you know who that is? Mm. I, I, I'm blanking on her name. You, you wouldn't the know. comics have changed so much uh, since I read them. There's like multiple, there's like Spider Gwen now. and, Sp- and Oh, no, Miles it's, Morales it's, she has a different name. Spider-Man. She has like a different name altogether, yeah, but she's bitten know. by the same spider. Uh, so, anyway, that's supposed to be a big thing, I guess. <laughs> she may be in Venom, right? Maybe. So we'll, We shall see. Okay. Um, another film coming out is uh, First Man. Oh, yeah. First Man is uh, Damien Chazelle, mm-hmm. uh, his follow-up movie to La La Land, and, of course, his big star from La La Land, Ryan Gosling, is in it. And uh, Ryan is going to be playing Neil Armstrong. Yeah, that looks really good. And uh, if you haven't seen it yet, you need to go... Uh, the Saturday Night Live skit. I saw that. Ryan Gosling about papyrus. It's awesome. It's <laughs> the, awesome. The font on the Avatar poster is hilarious. You need to watch it. It's, it's so I, oh, I love it. Especially if you're like into graphic yeah, design. Yeah. I, I thought it was hilarious. That was a great <laughs> trailer. I mean, a great uh, you know Saturday Night Live skit. Yeah. I did catch that. So that that's great. Go, go do a YouTube search for that. And then um, and finally, the last uh, movie that we have on our list is, and there's, there's much more than this, but there's The House with a Clock on Its Wall. Which yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is um, based on um, literary material. I, I'm not familiar with the book itself. Uh, Eli Roth yeah. is directing, so you kind of get a hint at what it could be about. Uh, it does star Jack Black and Kate Blanchett, so uh, it sounds like it could be an interesting project. So it's probably horror if you uh, this It's probably but, horror, but maybe know. it's it, maybe it's like more than horror. You know, it what I mean? sounds like a horror. Movie. But I mean the way but, yeah, it with yeah. Jack Black and Kate Blanchett, you yeah, think it it's going to be maybe horror, but more than that yeah. kind of thing. Well, so. it'd be interesting to see where that goes. Um, and just a reminder: there's there's way more productions than this Absolutely. going on right now. There's at least over fifty going on that I've counted. And if you really want to learn more, if you want to, um, you know, be involved in these productions, get, we encourage you to go to Georgia.org and check out the Help Wanted Hotline. Yeah, the Help Wanted Hotline. And they're actually, like the ones we mentioned, some of the ones we mentioned are still 
soliciting resumes to be part of the production as crew. Yeah. And I'm sure there's going to be casting notices soon about and, it, too. Uh, yeah, if you follow Cinema ATL on Twitter, I, I repost a bunch of the casting notices there. So mm-hmm. uh, you should be up to date if you follow there's one more piece of news, and this is not to do with local industry news or anything, but I thought about you when I saw this. Did you see the independent film set where the cop shot at an actor? Oh, I heard about that, yes. In Indiana, there was an independent film being shot at a brewery, and apparently they were filming a uh, robbery scene. Mm-hmm. And real police showed up, saw the actor come out with a mask and what looked like a gun out of the set, Told him to drop the weapon. The actor obviously caught off guard, didn't understand what was going on, didn't drop the weapon immediately, got shot at. Mm. Got shot at. We got There's body cam footage of it. Cop thankfully missed him. And then they figured out what was going on. Yeah. But man, I thought about you because <laughs> of the incident. And we had we talked about this when we talked yeah. about stunts. Yeah. But man, that is scary. Yeah, it's very important to make sure that the local... If you're using guns at all, doesn't matter if they're prop or real... Make sure you inform local law enforcement that you will be shooting. Right. Well, and not even the guns thing. I mean, that was part of the problem because someone in the neighborhood saw it and reported Mm -hmm. a possible robbery. But I think you need to also be sure. I know there's a temptation to be guerrilla a lot, and I get it. You really need to keep people informed about what's going on so that something like that doesn't happen. Yeah, definitely. Well... You know, it's a good lesson to be learned. Nothing, he was shot at, right? He wasn't, yeah, he, he wasn't shot. No, at, he wasn't shot, so, thankfully. But so, but imagine, imagine, that's, that's yeah, crazy. Definitely. Uh, and so finally, to, to, to just wrap up our interesting new segment, I want to talk a little bit about some of the festivals that are going on right now. Oh, yeah, now. yeah, that's um, right. There's uh, the Yollywood Film Festivals playing from October uh, 9th through the 15th at Seven Stages. There's the Atlanta Horror Film Festival from October 19th through the 22nd at Synchronicity. Um, the Rome International Film Festival is coming November 9th through the 12th. Um, and its opening night film is a documentary called Man Killer, which was produced by Gail Ann Hurd. Right, and it's about the first, um, the first ever Cherokee female chief uh, named Wilma Mankiller. So it should be a really interesting documentary. There's also uh, one local film that I know of. It's called Birthday Cake. Uh, okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've heard of that one too. And then, uh, uh, f- oh, and Gail Ann Hurd, by the way, if you don't know the name, she's a, a producer on Walking Dead. Yeah. Oh, that's a show that shoots here. Yeah. <laughs> and then finally, the Savannah Film Festival, which is the October 28th through the, the November 4th, has got a lot of big name special honorees coming mm. to town. So who is it? Selma Hayek, Holly Hunter, John Boyega, Patrick Stewart, Aaron Sorkin, and Robert Pattison are all going to be honored at. <sighs> The film festival. Wow, so that's a big. If you want to make the trip lineup. to Savannah, it might be worth it. I've been to the Savannah Film Festival, and it's it's a great festival. It's really cool, and man, that's that's a big that's a big amount of honorees for sure. So that's it for the industry news. Yeah, let's move on to the top three. That's right. So. Top three Tom Cruise movies. Yep, in honor Tom's of uh, Tom Cruise being in American Made, which we're going to review later. Yep. Uh, we are going to do a top three list of Tom Cruise movies. Yep, and for those of you that don't know, <clears throat> our top three is not necessarily the best. It's what we prefer. Which is the best <laughs> <laughs> to us. Well, and I, I would like to caveat my list by saying that they're not the top three. Mine aren't. This is just my criteria. Sure. We were just general and said top three Tom Cruise movies. My determination were the movies that I enjoyed the most that Tom Cruise was in. It doesn't necessarily have to, anything to do with its performance. Uh, I, I, I think I so, know one, one of the ones you're going to say then well, if, in that case. That's cool. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, no. This is our favorites. Who cares what, what anybody <laughs> else thinks? This is our favorites. So. If you disagree with us, you're wrong. <laughs> That's right. Wrong. That's right. You're wrong. <laughs> so how do we want to do this? Because I really had trouble. Like, I've been having trouble with my top threes lately, even the articles that we've been doing. But this one is hard. Not, the top two are not hard for me. Yeah. The third one, because there's so many that I like. I mean, this, to to be fair, Tom Cruise has a lot of really good movies. Okay, yeah, yeah, he does. He so does. the third position was really hard for me. And so how do we want to do this? Let's just go top down, and we'll say top so. Down. You have time to think. I about got time to one. keep thinking. Okay, and good. we'll uh, we'll let's we'll alternate. Sounds good. This time, okay. 
Uh, I'll start. Okay. It's pretty obvious what I'm going to choose. It's I Edge of Tomorrow. It's uh-huh. one of my favorite movies anyway. And it just happens to have Tom Cruise in it. Sure. Um, but we'll talk about it a little bit more later. But uh, what was your top? My number one is probably obvious. Jerry Maguire. Yeah. Jerry Maguire. <laughs> Cameron Crowe fan. Cameron Crowe. And, 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 and Those are two obvious ones. It's for very obvious. If they know us. Yeah, so. exactly. So uh, number two for me is actually... One you might not expect. It's War of the Worlds. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's definitely. Uh, yeah. Which it doesn't get a lot of love mm-hmm. from a lot of people, but it was. Re- I I just enjoyed the movie a lot, and I really think I, I enjoy Spielberg's direction of it more than the fact that Tom Cruise is in it. But sure. No, I get it. But you know, on that theme of Spielberg direction, yes. My number two is Minority Report. Okay. Yes. It, I, fantastic movie. I see. It, I I don't. To me, that one I didn't really like. Really, honestly. but I, I okay. understand there's a lot of love for it. So sure, I'll let it slide. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mike. Thanks. You have my permission. I appreciate you letting it slide this time. <laughs> Although I think my top three is probably going to be more criticized than your top three. Uh, my third movie is actually Mission Impossible: Ghost Protocol. Okay. Okay. Which to me was a reboot of the Mission Impossible series. I didn't really like the first three Mission Impossibles, but this new set of characters I really enjoy. So, uh, well, I, t- I, t- I agree that that's the best Mission Impossible movie. Yeah. For sure. For yeah. sure. So now I got... So now you got to go choose. Okay. Got a list. Uh, I, got a whole, I got a list of five possible <laughs> third ones. So I'm just going to pick one. Uh, Interview with a Vampire. Interview with a Vampire. I'm just picking it just because I've seen it recently mm-hmm. and enjoyed it still. And I thought he did a great job in the face of a lot of like opposition. Yeah. This was early days. This is not like today. Like today, they probably would never let them be in it. Yeah. Because you know how the internet is now. Exactly. This is before the internet was as bad as it is now. They didn't want him to be this yeah. character. And and he pulls it off. I think he does, does a great job. And it's a good movie. It, so it's interesting that you bring that one up because like when I was coming up with this list, it really occurred to me that I don't really think that I think Tom Cruise is a better movie star than he is an actor. Like, I see him uh, as a movie star okay. more than an actor. I don't really... Mm-hmm. I was trying to think of, like, what performances the Tom Cruise give that I really <clears throat> thought were great. And granted, I haven't seen, like, Born on the Fourth of July, which is probably one of his, his biggest yes. roles. Absolutely. And most well-known roles. Um, uh, you know, he was, he was pretty good in A Few Good Men, you know. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> another, one, another one of my choices. Um, but for me, he's just... I like him as a star, and he, he does these... Big action vehicles. That that's what I really appreciate. Mm-hmm. With Tom Cruise when he does. Sure. These. I don't think. Yeah, I think you're right. That I don't think anybody does that kind of thing better than mm-hmm. him. But I think you're shortchanging him to th- to say that he doesn't. He's not as an actor. Well, I'm not saying he's not an actor. I just think that to me, he's more. I see him more as a movie star than an actor. Like I, I, get, I appreciate. I, get it. Him I totally more get as it. No, I get. I actor. get the idea of that. But he is a phenomenal actor at times. Yeah. I mean, phenomenal. Well, here's the thing: is that the 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 movies that I picked, Tom Cruise isn't really the main He's reason Cruise, right? about why I like the movie. Sure. It's more that I like the movie, right? And I applaud Tom Cruise for picking entertaining, absolutely good movies. And the fact that he does his own stunts really adds to some of the the you know, realistic factor sure, of some sure. of it too. Um, so I appreciate that a little bit more than I appreciate his acting of talent. Which, you know, when I think about it, is you know. I can't really pick a, a, a film that I would say, like, oh, wow, Tom Cruise really blew me away with his acting. Hmm. Well, you know, I, I, I would I would probably say you're, you're, not, <laughs> you're not looking deep enough into his performances because he, I mean, he can be, and at times he's not. I mean, sometimes mm-hmm. he's, he's Tom Cruise on cruise control, mm-hmm. which is fine. Cruise control. Right. right. You see what I did there? <laughs> but no, I mean, it, which is fine for yeah. certain movies. You know what I mean? But it doesn't work sometimes because, like, he... Was okay in the Mummy, but the Mummy yeah. sucked, kind of. I didn't see the Mummy. Right, I'm just saying, but only because yeah. he didn't have he he didn't put any extra life into it mm-hmm. in the movie. Maybe he couldn't. I don't know. So, but no, I mean, I think that's a. I think your top three is a solid top three. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think, you know, you don't give him enough credit as an actor. <laughs> that's all. That's all. I mean, he gets enough. Maybe deservedly so. He gets enough criticism. 
Yeah, no. I out mean, there. Gets, I mean, and we've talked about this before, and, right? We talked about this before. He doesn't shadows. get enough credit for as as yeah. good as he is. And I'm not saying he's not a good actor. I'm just saying that I think that just to me, that's not why I, I like Tom Cruise movies. Sure, it's sure. more about. I, I mean, he's solid in everything he does, right? But, so I know that he's not going to give a bad performance necessarily. Right. It's just that I don't go it to, to expect to see to, Tom Cruise to wow me, right? Even in like a film like. Like Edge of Tomorrow, which was my number one, I, st- I he's he's well. I would there's say, nothing really specific about his acting in that. Yeah, that would say, oh wow, this made this a great movie. It's more about the concept and about the way it was shot mm-hmm. and how it was filmed. And I mean, granted, he gives a, he's a good performance. He's like kind of you know him his arc of you know like realizing you know. You know, he's not just in it for himself right. or notoriety, and that he's you know he becomes a true hero in the sure. course of the movie. You see that, so he does a good job with it. It's right. just that not that I. No, know. I I totally yeah I get I get it. You might want to if you've never seen More on the Fourth of July, you might yeah, want to watch that's it. One that I know because I he is awesome in the movie. Yeah. He's awesome in the movie. He was up for an Oscar that year. Mm-hmm. But guess who else was up for an Oscar? I mean, Daniel Day Lewis. So mm-hmm. he lost out to like. <laughs> Probably the guy who could beat anybody on any day. So. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I, I do appreciate his performances in like A Few Good Men or Rain Man. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's he's not a bad actor. Color of Money. I mean, yeah. He, I mean, he, yeah. He does what he does, and it, it, it he does it good. So. Right. No. No. Exactly. I get it. I get it. Um, so let's talk about your uh, number two movie. Mm-hmm. Minority Report. I think. Report. I I just think it's a super solid movie. The concept is, is high concept, done really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I think he, he gives a great performance in it, if, if, you, if you ask me. I mean, obviously a lot of action in it, and he does really well with that mm-hmm. all the time. But <clears throat> there's a nuance to how the character evolves, you know, in this movie. And his work with Samantha Morton, I think, is the, is the telepath. Yeah. And... Uh, his work with her is really awesome, actually. I was studying it recently, and like, man, you know, they just sort of, they just they just ooze believability that, that they're there in that situation. Well, that's a movie that I think I should definitely check out again, because I, I saw it in the theater <clears throat> way back when, and haven't seen it since. So, and mm-hmm. I know a lot of people have love for that movie, and I just didn't appreciate it at the time, but maybe I would appreciate it now. Yeah, um, I mean, it, I think you might. And then, for me, War of the Worlds uh, uh, was just a really superbly directed film mm-hmm. and cinematography of that film. I don't I, Fortunately, I don't remember who, who was a cinematographer on it, but there are just some shots in that movie that are just like, like just blew my mind how like awesome they were. Mm-hmm. Like Specifically, when they were driving down the road and there's this camera shot that oh, goes around the car. Yeah, and it's that's very cool. And he just keeps moving around. And it's just <clears> that's like, very cool. Uh, and I just love the visuals of it. Um, I always, I love the tale of War of the Worlds and I just, I like the take on it, even though a lot of people were disappointed in it. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I definitely wasn't disappointed in it. But, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was superbly directed as well. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it just didn't make my top. Yeah. List, no, but, no, cool. I, but I, I would I would assume that most people probably wouldn't make most people's top three. Mm-hmm. But for me, it did. And then, uh, and like we said, we talked about Mission Impossible. I, I, I think the Ghost Protocol is the best one. I definitely enjoy these characters more than the original characters, which really focus more on Tom Cruise and not any of the sub characters. Right, right. Which is like, like that's what I like about this. Um, this new, rebooted almost. Mm-hmm. No, you know. no, no. I think so. it's certainly the best of the of the Mission Impossible movies. Well, unfortunately, we're, we're running out of time on this uh, one. Uh, okay. Uh, real quick, your third choice. What do you want us to say about that? Uh, well, interview with a vampire. I talked yeah, about that. You so, talked about it. So, so let's talk about Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire. Okay, yeah, we didn't talk about him. Come on now. Do it quick. Okay, well, it's just again another superb performance. Yes. Obviously, great, writ- well written. You know, it's just you know, again, overall, great job in the movie and a, and a really well made movie. And I will say that out of like most of the movies that he's done, that that one does stand out to me as a little bit more of performance level. Of course, it's not an action film, so mm-hmm. you get a little bit more depth. To yeah, his character. And, I mean, it's again, yeah, very just well done, and you know. Not a not a false note in the movie. All right, well, we got to move on. We got to talk about American Made. Yeah, American Made. Does he do it again? Does would this crack our top three? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. So, so that brings us to our big movie review. Uh, 
And this month, it's American Made. American Made, starring Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, and uh, directed by Doug Liman. Yes. He Ooh. also directed... Your favorite. Edge of Tomorrow. That's right. Um, so, yeah, so for those of you who don't know what American Made is all about, it tells the story. Tom Cruise plays Barry Seal, mm-hmm. who was a, a pilot for TWA, who gets mm-hmm. recruited by the CIA to help take pictures. Um, the in, Sandinistas. Yeah. The Sandinistas in Nicaragua, Nicaragua at mm-hmm. the time. Or what, yeah, yeah, it was Nicaragua. Um, and uh, he ends up he ends meeting... Up- some of these people, some drug lords, with right. some famous drug lords. Well, yeah, right? one like Emmanuel Noriega, yeah, and he starts running messages and, to him, yeah, and, and then, then he gets also, connected with Pablo Escobar, Pablo Escobar and, that and his crew, crew. And the Medellin drug So contact. he ends up running drugs for them, running guns for the U.S. government, right? Uh, and basically, he just gets involved, he gets in way over his head into running. Flights for all these different things, right, right. and it actually ends up, um, you know, the Iran Contra scandal. This mm-hmm. is how it, it wraps grew into it exactly into this. So it basically tells his story. Sure. Um, so that being said, uh, what was your what was your feelings on American Made? You know, it's kind of what's really the way the movie ends is is different. Just to, to say this, this is a fun movie. Actually, yeah, yeah <laughs> it's it really is. fun. Because the character is really uh, kind of wild, and like you, you could sort of root for the character to, to get things done, yeah. you know, for himself, which are really bad things in some cases. <laughs> yeah. So it's like it's hard to like. He's a rootable yeah. presence and a rootable character in this film, but the person is probably not that great. Yeah. So, you know. Um... It's it's one of those films that you can see the character going where he shouldn't be going, and right. you're like, but you still want to root for him sure. because he's a likable guy, mm-hmm. um, which is like different than other movies that are of the similar, ilk, sure. you know, like maybe like Blow or right. you know, and other movies like that where they get involved in the drug thing and you just they become dislikable people. Right. He may, basically stays likable throughout the entire Yeah, the, it's the kind of film. almost, you know, it's like, it's portrayed like it's almost innocent what he's doing mm-hmm. even though, I mean, it's drug trafficking. Yeah. And arms. And this is an arms gray dealing, area too sure. because he's doing a lot of this for the government. Right. I mean, the drug part's not for the government but, you know, the stuff that he's doing for the government is sure not legal either. Yeah, and right. some of that has been criticized. Obviously, some of what the, our government did in those days is very criti- criticized as well mm-hmm. and so you know it, it is a great area on both ends of the spectrum of what what the story involves but the movie and the character um it's fun it's a fun ride actually yeah i i, I enjoyed it while i was watching it and i did appreciate it's not an action movie per se but there's some action elements mm-hmm. in it um like when you're trying to take off uh Oh, on yeah, a yes. very short runway, yes. that type of things. It's it's got some funny moments in it. And in mm-hmm. fact, like I think uh, Rob Prago, a local yeah. Atlanta actor, mm-hmm. has got a really funny line in there. He plays uh, he plays one, one of the CIA, the CIA guys. agents, mm-hmm. like his uh, cube mate of uh, Donald Gleason's right, character, right. who was the one that actually recruits Tom Cruise mm-hmm. and that he has interaction with. Um, his name is Schaefer, but Schaefer <laughs> in quotes, so it's not necessarily right. his real name. Um, uh, but. I like the interaction between Tom Cruise and Don, Donald Gleason in this movie as well. I mm-hmm. think that they work really well together. I liked his character. He doesn't play it as the straight man, government right. official. I thought he was good. And, you know, we talked about, you know, liking this character that Tom Cruise plays, a bit Barry Seal. Um, even the Jesse Plemons, who plays one of the, sher- the sheriff in the small sure. town that he mm-hmm. relocates to, um, even calls him. He's a nice guy, you know. He's yeah. just trying to do good things. Well, so, yeah, that's part of the story too. Yeah. Is not. I mean, the movie originally was going to be titled Mina, which yeah. is that Mina is the Mina town, is the town in Arkansas, Arkansas yes. where he was running this operation out of. Yeah, and uh, I think they, from their perspective, he probably was a great guy because yeah. he's kind of revitalized their whole community. Exactly. Which was, and it was shot, you know. For those who don't know, American Made was shot a lot in Atlanta, right? And that was actually Talking Rock. No, it wasn't Talking Rock. It was um, Ball Ground. Ball where, Ground. Where Mina right. stands in for. Um, I get my talking. Yeah, be careful with that Talking Rock. Talking Rock. Talking Rock. 
<laughs> uh, ball ground uh, it, it stands in for me now, so it's kind of cool to see that. Right. I don't know if you've ever driven through ball ground. I've, I've been through there a couple times on my way up to, to Jasper for some uh, shoots. For some shooting, <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, but that was cool to see. Um, and, you know, I mentioned Rob Prago earlier when we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast some of the local talent that was involved. But, you know, I saw personally, I saw, you know, E. Roger Mitchell plays a pretty, pretty decent role in Absolutely. That, as an FBI mm-hmm. agent looking into this. Um, Rob Prago, we mentioned. Um, and then there were a couple, like, almost blink and you miss some cameos uh, with Alex Collins yep. and Scott Poitras sure. and Justice League. They were, they were, were ATF eight, agents. Well, yeah, well, there was, was, they were, we don't know who they were because there were so many <laughs> were so, so many different agencies yeah. converging on that scene. Yeah, so that I don't scene. remember wh- which one they were yeah. attached to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a funny scene when when everything starts coming in mm-hmm. on, on, on him. Uh, all the agencies, one right. piece of the pie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Overall, I enjoyed the movie, um, but it wasn't one of the movies I would think would is going to have a lasting impression on me. I thought it was enjoyable, sure, but there wasn't anything s- truly special about it that that, that I really would stood out and be like, "Wow, that's a, mm-hmm. it's a great movie." And, you know, um, it was it was enjoyable. Yeah, I agree. But, I think maybe what what the problem is it's too cute. To be poignant, you yeah. know what I mean. I mean, the and the the story could have been if we really got into this on a more serious basis, mm-hmm. like a uh, movie a couple of years back. Jeremy Renner is part of this story. Um, what's the movie? Ah, man, what's the, the Messenger? Kill the Messenger? Oh, you didn't see that was also filmed locally. Yeah, yeah. Jeremy Renner uh, plays the reporter who exposed all of this. Oh, okay. And so he knew Barry Seal. And uh, he's obviously not in this movie. I, I expected that character to actually be in this movie. But I think there's problems with, you know, we'll get into in the technique yeah. topic. There's problems with how much of this is actually true, yeah. how much can it be proven to be true. You know, but that movie was done more straight up and it's more poignant in a sense because it treats the subject matter a lot more seriously than this movie does. Well, yeah, and then, yeah, you know, this movie says it's based off a true story. Sure. <laughs> the key word based off a of true story. Right. So, yeah, how much was fabricated, how much was real, we don't know. And plus, you have an unreliable narrator, as Tom Cruise's character is actually the one telling the story. Telling the story, right. Through video exactly. tape footage. And, which, you know, in spoiler alert, the character. Well, should I? I mean, if you, if you can read Wikipedia, you can figure it out. Yeah, I mean, nobody knows for sure. We can't corroborate with the actual person. Who's telling this? Who you know? Who's supposedly telling the story in the movie is not around to be telling the story. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's one of the things that makes it maybe lessens the lessens the hand, which is maybe why they felt like treating it less seriously uh, in a sense because of the fact that they knew they couldn't rely on yeah something like that. We don't know the full right. tale. We can't. You know, we know what's been reported. Mm-hmm. We know what's been in documents. Right. We know if it's to be- believe that he, le- he left these tapes behind, I don't even know that that's true. You know, right. that could be a just a storytelling device. But uh, I did appreciate some of the things I did appreciate um, from the director, just the way it was put together, was the the feel of the time period. Mm-hmm. You really did feel like you were in the late seventies, early eighties, right? Um, which included the VHS, yeah, stylized <laughs> logos and stuff at the beginning right. of the movie. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I thought, you know, that really got me pumped. <laughs> you know, like, oh, this is cool. They're, right. They're really like, because like we, the Universal logo comes on screen. It's the the current modern day one, and it just like goes, and it goes back to the eighties, more sense of the eighties version, right? Version. So that was that was fun. So, no, yeah, I mean, well done. I mean, well done movie. Yeah. I think you're right about about the the impact of it. I don't think it's going to be a lasting impact on many people, but you know, in terms of a disposable, well made movie, it certainly is. Yeah, I think it will have life probably more than the theater, probably more on on demand and right. basic cable. Mm-hmm. It'll probably rerun a lot. I think, it, you know, it's one of those movies that's just, it's fun to watch, mm-hmm. but it's, it's, it's disposable. Yeah, it's got of. enough energy to be engaging yeah. to the viewer, but it's not like, I mean, it's not Schindler's List. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's nothing that's going to yeah. stay with you. Yeah. You know, that's... that's so it thing. wouldn't break our top three, basically. Probably so. not, no. <laughs> um, But so to wrap up, since we're running out a little low on time, um, what was your final grade? I give it a like solid B. Yeah, I would agree. I would give it a B as well. So, um, so that's it for the big movie review. Yeah, that's so it. Let's 
move on. Okay. So, the today's technique topic is adaptations. Yeah, so loose, loosely right. adaptations. Because, as we mentioned, you know, American Made is based off a true story. So, mm-hmm. there is some subject matter that, you know... That was adapted. Right, right. So, yeah, so like I said, it was based on a true story. Sure. So, <laughs> th- th- this is one of the conversations I want to talk about. is like, how much leeway do you feel, as a writer, you can get away with? When you're telling a story, how much, you know, because you, you do need to have that dramatic tension or right. you need to have the action sequences or you need to have some stuff that will engage the audience. A film is not a documentary. Right. Exactly. Right. So how much leeway? I think, I mean, I think honestly, as much as you want. Right. right? Because it's, it's still when you're dealing with a narrative and you're adapting something for narrative fiction, even if it's based on a true story, your commitment is to the narrative right mm-hmm. and so you can do and, and believe me filmmakers do they do whatever they want <laughs> to make the narrative right yeah. right at the same time it doesn't mean you, you you can't be criticized for going way off the beaten path yeah you know for you know for the material not being right well i think that's where it's very important what you're telling the audience right you need to be up front with your audience tell them is this based on a true story? Right. Is this is this the true story? You know, is it or is it like many Law and Order episodes where it's ripped from the headlines? Ripped from right? the headlines, right? So, I mean, you can tell a story. So, like those Law and Order episodes, they they just take the general concept and mm. then build a wholly unique story around it. So it's not even mm. they don't have the same character names. Right. And they just take oh, we saw this crime happen. It was very interesting. So we're going to take the parts that we like and turn sure, it into a story. Sure. So there's that kind of adaptation as well, right? But if if you're up front, to me, I feel as a viewer, if you're up front with me and tell me what I'm seeing, I, I'm with you. But if you're lying to me, right, then I get a little upset afterwards. Like like, like for American Made, I, I it was I knew it was based. It says it says right at the front, it's right. based off a true story, mm-hmm. right. So I I got the idea that it's you know it's not hundred percent accurate. Sure. So sure. and based on it, like we said, based on the narrative how it's told, it's an unreliable narrator situation mm-hmm. anyway. So they can really kind of go wherever they want. And I think again when we talked about the tone being light, mm-hmm. I think that also gives you a clue as how light they are playing yeah. with with the facts <laughs> because yeah. they may not even know all the facts, and that's yeah. part of what on this particular one, you know, could have been why they weren't faithful to the story because they don't know the true story. Yeah, that could be as well. Yeah, for all we know, that Barry Seal is a real jerk. And right, right. <laughs> not likable guy. Right? Sure, sure. Um, but, you know. Or, you know. That doesn't make an interesting story, like you said. Exactly, exactly. And so I think that's, you know, truth as an artist, you know, as much leeway as you want, mm-hmm. right? But if you want to be taking taken more seriously, I think it is important to stick to... Stick to a lot of as much of the truth as you can. Yeah. When you're adapting a true story. Yeah, especially if you're using the real people's names right. and real people's stories. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you don't want to corrupt something that they've built that's important. Yeah. So, I mean, if it's an important film, you know what I mean? A lot of these real life stories are more important than others. Yeah, right? so, exactly. So, I think it also depends on the narrative of how important it is into the true the zeitgeist of oh yeah you know, i mean i think that's yeah and true. i think you, you couldn't do you couldn't do another movie that's more sort of important so to speak and be that light with it yeah well i mean like a movie like let's take like selma for instance right like, uh, you couldn't yeah. make up stuff for that and no that's not saying that everything that happened in, in the movie right. selma actually happened right it, it's but it's, they're staying true to the the points of the film, sure. right? So, and most of the major beats the beat, were yeah. true. So we don't know what happened in his private life. Absolutely his not, Conversations yeah. with his wife and exactly. stuff like that. We don't know what that... So those are played more for dramatic... Effect, you know, right. Effect, right? Exactly. So, so um, one of the things I want to talk about, and now I have never written an adaptation of previous sort. Well, I've adapted some of my own material mm-hmm. into a screenplay, but I've never adapted somebody else's screen. Uh, have you done that? that? Um, yes, I actually have done that. Um, it, but it was not, it was not based on a true story. Yeah. I have adapted yeah. a novel, so to speak. Or, yeah. So I, yeah, I, I didn't want to, you know, this is 
the overall conversation about adapt- adaptations mm-hmm. and, and um, uh, not necessarily about real life stories. It was just an example that brought us into it. But uh, yeah. so yeah, so you've, you've done, adapted a novel. What is the process that you go through? Because there's so much more that you can tell in a novel than you can tell. Sure. Like, well, my, my, you know, with this particular case, the novel it was not, you know, it's not like War and Peace or anything. Yeah. <laughs> but it it was a novel. It was a crime thriller, you know, type of thing. And so the good the good thing about that situation was that the story we were able to keep sort of intact. Mm-hmm. All of the little things, like what you can't do is pull out in most this is the the thing with people don't understand about screenplays not being novels is you can't pull out all the inner monologues yeah. from every character you have to tell the story of the action yeah because what we're going to see right and so that's all we did we stuck to sort of the beats of the story kept that intact mm-hmm. um we even pulled we pulled a few nuggets of dialogue out of out of it but we also felt free to do our own yeah. you know when we were constructing other scenes so um, it was fairly straightforward. It wasn't difficult. Yeah. Now, I do think that adaptation is difficult. This particular case, it wasn't just because of how straightforward that novel was. But um, I do, I've, I've thought about working on other adaptations mm-hmm. and have not completed any yet just because of the difficulty. Now, that one that you, that you adapted, uh, did you... How did you get the material? Source material was it? Actually, the, the it was. Author actually, approach you or? Did yeah, you... it was an assignment. Okay. Um. So myself and uh, my writing partner Eddie Singleton were approached to adapt this novel mm. because people were interested in turning it into a movie, uh, because the novel had been fairly popular um, with a particular audience. So did you have any contact with the writer while you were doing it? Yes. And did you get his feedback on it? Yes. Or? And 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 one of the things, you know, one of the good things about the experiences was that when we when we did turn in the draft and the writer weighed in on it, they were very pleased with the translation. So that was really cool. But, um, you know, like I said, it again, it's kind of a pulpy novel mm-hmm. that, you know, was well, already ripe for... It takes a straightforward story. It's very straightforward. Story, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so you mentioned, like, <laughs> doing War and Peace is going to be a little bit different. Right. right. I mean, or even I've, I've actually gotten to projects where we were thinking about adapting true stories and, mm-hmm. and we've talked about how we would approach it and we've never cracked it yet. Yeah. So that's why I haven't done any of those well, yet. I, I, I mentioned, well, I've, I adapted some short stories I did into a future, mm-hmm. but that was my own work, so it was sure. pretty easy. But there's, there's, there are some interesting things about that um, that I want to... I'm Right now, I'm actually doing kind of the opposite of what people normally do. I'm actually taking one of my scripts that I wrote and I'm adapting it into a novel. Okay. Which you think would be easy because your know, script yeah. is an outline. Sure. Right? Absolutely. For, it's like almost a beat for beat outline of what you want to do. But translating that 100 page, 90 page script into a 300, 400 page novel. Right. There's a lot that you have to fill in the gaps on. And when you're telling a story as a, a screenplay writer, you are just telling the facts. And you don't have, like you said, none of the inner monologues. Right. There's not a lot of description. So it is it is a task to do it. It's I think it's something that, um, that people should look at, though, because the re- one of the reasons I'm doing it is because the script that I wrote is a multi-million dollar budget mm-hmm. film. That I'm not going to produce myself. No, right? <laughs> not without some money falling okay. from the sky. Um, but it's a story that I think is marketable, mm-hmm. um, and you know, I could submit it to you know production companies and, and, and that, that route as well. But there's also the benefit to me of if I can turn it into a novel that's engaging and interesting. You can publish the novel. Mm-hmm. And then you still have your script. Right, so right. That if the novel does get interest, then mm-hmm. you say, oh, well, I've got my script right here. So you're kind of almost like double dipping if you're sure, a writer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hey, I'm going to get paid for my novel, mm-hmm. maybe. And, uh, you know, well, and you may get, you may, it may be easier to get your novel to the public than it is well, to get a, exactly. a screenplay it is, made. It is much easier to get to the public because there's so many opportunities to self-publish nowadays. Right. You can at least get that done, right? And there's smaller, like, like publishing houses and stuff like that. Um, so it also, and also basically you're giving your, you're making your own IP, your own sure, intellectual exactly, property. Exactly. And that seems to be one of the hottest things in Hollywood now. They want IP. They want. Absolutely. They and want so them. when you create IP, 
then when you adapt the IP, yeah. it's like, oh yeah, that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> I'll buy into that. When it was just your script. <laughs> when it was just a script originally. It was like, I'm not buying into that. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So, um, I'll just wrap it up a little bit. Uh, I just wanted to like touch on it because I thought it was an interesting topic uh, from this film. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, it's something to consider if you're a screenwriter to either adapt somebody else's work or it's, yeah. tell true stories. Yeah, it's or, totally something on my bucket list still. I mean, I don't even consider we did do one. You know, but I don't even really consider it because it wasn't that yeah. difficult. You know, which I I'm I'm talking about trying to. I really want to adapt some really intricate story yeah. into a screenplay. Well, just one thing: make sure you get the rights to do it. Absolutely, because yeah. otherwise you're <laughs> exactly. just wasting your time. Exactly. And I have to tell my dad that because my dad wants me to adapt this book. That I'm like, give me the rights. I'll oh, exactly. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it until I get the rights. Right. So, no. Exactly. Um, That's so very important. If the author of No Left Turns is out there, I want the rights to your books. So, so yeah, get with us. Get with us. Uh, you can tweet us like we talked tweet about. Us, that's <laughs> idea. Give me permission. All right. Well, we can talk more about that. And absolutely. You know, if you guys have any thoughts about that, please. Yeah. Let us know. Or if you've adapted stuff, let yeah. us know about your experience. All right. That's it for the technique topic. So it's time for. The movie game. The movie game. We love it. All right. Movie game. All right. You ready? Movie game. Yeah. You ready for this? I'm totally ready. Na, 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 na. That's as much as I can do without having copyright notice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for those of you that don't know the movie game, oh, yeah. uh, basically what it is is a, a, chain. a chain. So if I name a movie like Edge of Tomorrow, then Martin would have to name an actor that was in Edge of Tomorrow like... Brendan Gleeson. Brendan Gleeson, and then come back back to me. I would have to name a movie that Brendan Gleeson was in, like uh, oh, like I'm drawing, drawing blank right now. This doesn't count. Okay, uh, <laughs> I just saved it. Yes, I, I probably would have thought of something. Um, but anyway, so we play best two out of three. Yep. When we play two players, mm-hmm. and uh, I guess the only other rule is you can't rename a movie within the same within room. the same chain. Right. Yes, right. Um, you can name sequels. Sure. So, all right. <laughs> all right. Let's go. All right. Who's starting? Um, I think you're the reigning champion. Probably. So, <laughs> likelihood <laughs> is that you are the reigning champion. Okay. So why don't you go first? All right. I'll start. Um, how no about? Basis. How about? Um, uh, Wonder Woman. <laughs> okay, Wonder Woman. Uh, um. Chris Pine. Chris Pine. How about... Um, Hell or High Water? Oh. Um, ben Foster. Okay. Ben Foster. Alpha Dog. Ooh, ooh, oh, oh. Oh. Alpha Dog. Um... There's a child actor in that. There was a child actor in that movie, and I'm trying to remember which one it is. I'm going to say Edward Furlong. I'm not sure. He probably is. I don't know. We'll, we'll check real quick on the IMDb's. <laughs> on the plural I will, databases. It's not, it's not the one I was thinking of. Uh, but let's see. I don't think he is. I was thinking it, it, it was actually Anton Yelton. Yel- oh, was man. Thinking. Rest in peace. Yes. But, okay. So I win the first one. So you win that. Also in that was Justin Timberlake. Yeah. I forgot about him and Emile Hirsch. Yeah. Huh. Anyway. Any of those would have been sufficient. And I, <laughs> I didn't name any of them. <laughs> All right. All right. So round two, I'll start. Um, let me go with... I'm going to go with... Uh, let's go with Jack Black. Okay. Um, School of Rock. Mm. Uh, oh, what's his name? I know his last name is White, but I can't remember his first name. Uh, uh I'm just going to say Joan Cusack instead. Okay. You, yeah, you better play safe. <laughs> you better play safe. Uh, say anything. 
John Cusack. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do that to you. <laughs> I'm not going to do that to you. Um, okay, John Cusack to me. Um, uh, serendipity. Serendipity. Uh, oh, um, Kate Beckinsale. Yes. Um, man, uh, Underworld. <laughs> the original Underworld. The original. Bill Nye. Yes. Yes. Um, Love Actually. Mm, that that gives me lots of options. Um, Chiwetel Ojifor. Okay. Um, Serenity. Um, Alan Tudyk. Uh, 28 Days. Sandra Bullock. Okay, good, good. Uh, 28 yeah. Days Later. Yeah. Yeah, I gotcha. All right. Um, <laughs> Sandra Bullock. Uh, um, oh, uh, okay. Uh, I'm just trying to think of something interesting. I'm uh, Forces of Nature. Forces of Nature. Oh, uh, holy, who was in that? Was Ben Affleck in that? You got it. Yes, okay. okay. Live by night. Live by night. Oh, that was the. Shh, I never saw that one. Casey Affleck. No. <laughs> wow. Okay. I didn't see it. Live you by saw night. the trailers though, right? I did. It was very. I mean, much like everybody else, it kind of forget. And yeah, it's on HBO it. now. That's, that's yeah. what it came to mind recently. Uh, who was in that? Uh, was Zoe Saldana, the... Chris Cooper, um, the dude from uh, the Mindy Project, the the, uh, the main, the, you know, the other I guy. I don't watch the, Mindy Project. Uh, well, I'm just saying that guy. Uh, I don't like them. I don't like. Them. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> let's let's get us in more trouble. I don't like. I don't like Mindy Project. I don't like the Mindy Project. <laughs> All right, well, Martin wins again. We love it. <laughs> you love it. I think the audience appreciates the champion. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like it. I love it. I want some more. Well, okay. that was fun. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. I'm trying to sing every song to get copyright infringement <laughs> <That's>... notices from <laughs> YouTube. So, okay, um... exactly. <laughs> Let's get All right. banned from YouTube <laughs> as soon as possible. <laughs> All right, so well, that does it for That's the it. September podcast. That's right. Uh, I'm sorry for the little uh, camera movement in the middle. Um, we adjusted that problem. We'll fix that. <laughs> we'll fix we we will get We to won't it. fix it in post, but we'll fix it next time. We'll fix it next time. Um, but yeah, so at least we did better than the last. I think so. I think so. I think so. Um, let's wrap up. Uh, what, 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 we want to hear from you. Yeah, definitely. That's the main thing. Let Absolutely. us know what you're working on. Let you know what you think about the podcast. Mm -hmm. Comment on YouTube down below if you're yeah. looking at this. Or on Cinema ATL. Go to CinemaATL.com. Yeah. Follow Cinema ATL stories. for sure. Follow us on Twitter. Da, 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 da. Yeah, and some new segments oh. coming too again. Like we, we mentioned, Cinema ATL. New, new content is already coming online. We're getting even more content after that online. It's gonna be it's gonna be major. So be sure you keep keep watching. Blow your mind. <laughs> and uh, once again, we want to thank Eureka Failure for yes. providing the music as they always do. Yep. YouTube, they always they always I, I provide think... the music for this. So don't don't tell me that exactly. they have a copyright violation. There's no copyright for them violation because they gave me permission. That's right. Don't do it. And, and truth be told, there's a, there's fans of Eureka Failure that are not necessarily fans of us. So, which is cool. It's fine. Why they be We're okay. I don't, know. I, I don't know. I mean, at least they they pay attention and listen to the podcast or watch it. But they like Eureka Failure a lot. Because I remember I asked you about yeah, the name yeah. of the song. So. Some people people enjoy it. Yeah. And why why wouldn't they enjoy it? Because it's good music. Absolutely. So thank you again. And I guess uh, that's it. That's I it. I guess we'll see you next. Well, I guess we'll, we'll see you see this later month. this month or next month, but September going into October. We'll see you in October. Yes. <laughs> uh, I just confused everybody. 
We'll see you next time. <laughs>